In alhamdulillah, nahmadu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'afiru wa na'udhu billahi min shuroori anfusina wa min sayyati a'amalina man yahdihillahu falamudhillala wa man yudhlil falahadiyala wa ashadu an la ilaha illa Allah wahdahu la sharika la wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluh صلوات الله وسلامه عليه أما بعد يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ الَّذِي تَسَاءَلُونَ بِهِ وَالْأَرْحَامِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ كَانَ عَلَيْكُمْ رَقِيبًا يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا اتَّقُوا اللَّهَ وَقُولُوا قَوْلًا سَدِيدًا يُصْلِحْ لَكُمْ أَعْمَالَكُمْ وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ وَمَنْ يُتِعِ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ فَقَدْ فَازَ فَوْزًا عَظِيمًا أَمَّا بَعْدُ فَإِنَّ أَصْدَقَ الْحَدِيثِ كِتَابُ اللَّهِ وأحسن هدي هدي محمد صلى الله وسلامه عليه وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار ثم أما بعد الحمد لله we continue in going over the explanation the شرح of أصول السنة لإمام أحمد بن حنبل رحمه الله تعالى the Imam, Rahimullah Ta'ala, he goes on and he says, وَمَنْ لَمْ يَعْرِفْ تَفْسِيرِ الْحَدِيثِ وَيَبْلُغْهُ عَقْلُهُ فَقَدْ كُفِيَ ذَلِكَ وَأُحْكِمَ لَهُ فَعَلَيْهِ بِالْإِيمَانِ بِهِ وَالتَّسْلِيمِ لَهُ مثل حديث الصادق المصدوق الحديث معروف حديث صادق المصدوق الذي ذكرنا في الدرس الماضي ثم قال الشيخ الإمام وما كان مثله في القدر <coughs> he says and whoever does not know the explanation of a hadith and whose intellect does not have the capacity to make him understand it then that will be sufficient i.e. to just merely affirm the ahadith and have faith in them, since everything from the religion has been perfected for him, and it is necessary for him to have faith in it and to submit to it, such as the hadith of the truthful one who is believed, the hadith Sadiq al-Masduq. And this was the hadith we mentioned in the last class. The Imam goes on to say, and whatever is similar to it, in the matter of Al-Qadr. ثُمَّ قَالَ الْإِمَامُ وَمِثْلُ أَحَدِيثُ الرُّؤْيَا كُلِّهَا وَإِن نَبَتْ عَنِ الْأَسْمَاعِ وَاسْتَوْحَشَ مِنْهَا الْمُسْتَمِعِ He said, and also the like of the ahadith regarding those narrations, those ahadith regarding the ru'ya, that the believers will see Allah Ta'ala in the hereafter. All of them, even if they even if they disagree with the people's hearing, and even if the one who was listening feels repelled by and and is averse to them, فَإِنَّمَا عَلَيْهِ الْإِيمَانِ بِهَا وَأَنَّ يَرُدَّ مِنْهَا حَرْفًا وَاحِدًا وَغَيْرِهَا مِنَ الْأَحَادِيثِ الْمَأْثُورَاتِ عَلَى الْثِقَاتِ he says, certainly it is obligatory upon him to have faith in them and to not reject a single word from them, nor from any such other ahadith which have been reported by reliable and trustworthy narrators. As we explain, as Imam as awzai rahimahullah ta'ala, he says, it is upon Allah to explain and it is upon the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam 
to deliver that message. And it is upon us to willingly submit. Allah Ta'ala explains the Prophet Sallallahu He conveys that message and it is upon us to willingly submit. So thus, whoever doesn't know a particular tafsir to a particular hadith, he doesn't understand it, hasn't reached his intellect, so on and so forth, it is upon him to believe in it. It is upon him to submit to it. And it's not a prerequisite, nor is it necessary for him to understand it in totality before he believes in it. And this is because Allah Ta'ala has given each and every one of us different levels of understanding. And just because we may not understand a particular concept doesn't negate the existence nor the relevance of that concept. Now, and there are many things like this. If you were to ask most people about the intricacies of how a diesel engine works, they won't know. But does that negate the fact that a diesel engine works? No, it still works, whether we understand it or not. Now, if you were to uh, yani, uh, look at the way in which airplanes fly and the like, just because people may have ignorance of this level of technology, does it negate its existence and its efficiency? Now, so likewise, the truth is the truth. So if there comes a hadith from the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, this is the truth. And if we don't understand it, it doesn't negate the fact that it is the truth. It is upon us to accept it, to submit to it in totality. Now, so the Shaykh he says in commenting on the statement of Imam Ahmed, rahimahullah taala, man lam yarif. Tafsir al-Hadith to the end of that statement, that that first yani, couple sentences, and whoever does not know the explanation of a hadith, the Imam he says whoever does not know the explanation of a particular hadith, nor has it reached his intellect, meaning he doesn't have intellectually the capacity to understand it and the like. Shaykh Rabir, Allah Taala, he goes on and he says in explaining. بعد النصوص قد لا تفهمها. He said some of the text, it is possible that you won't understand them. ولكن ما هي الحكمة والغاية منها؟ نعم. He said, but you may not know what is the wisdom or what is the purpose of it. وما هو السر؟ And what is the secret من ورائها? What is the secret behind it and the like? The Shaykh he says, فَعَلَيْكَ بِالْإِيمَانِ وَالتَّصْدِيقِ He said, it is only upon you to have iman and to believe in it, to affirm it. To have iman and to affirm it. لِأَنَّ هَذَا الْمُقْتَضَى iman, Because this is what is necessitated by iman. When we say we have iman in Allah Ta'ala, we have faith in Allah Ta'ala. نعم. There enters into this having faith in even those things that we ourselves don't understand. Now what's muhim as the Imam uh, points out or as the Alama Afwani points out is that what? Is that you have for mankind those who know. Just because we don't know doesn't mean it's unknown. Now you have those from the ulama and the like who know. But ala kullin it is from Iman for us to believe in that which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam informs us of. For us to believe in that which Allah Ta'ala informs us of. Even if we don't completely understand it. Even if we don't completely understand it. And this is with the acknowledgement that our understanding, our intellects, our capacity, they are limited. We don't understand everything and we're not going to understand everything. Naam. But from our iman we know that Allah Ta'ala speaks the truth. That the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he speaks the truth. So thus, when it comes a narration, when it comes a text from Allah or from the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, we believe in it completely. We submit to it because this is required from iman, and this is required from our believing and affirming and the like. The Shaykh he says, "Amanta bil He says. 
You have believed in the unseen. طيب. There are going to be matters of the unseen that we're not going to understand 100% because it's from the ghayb, it's from the unseen. Now, we're not going to understand 100% because it's from the unseen. But we believe in it. Now, the shaykh, he says, Amanta bi'anna muhammadan haq. He says, you have believed that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he is the truth. He is true. He's the true Prophet. Now, طيب. He says, وَأَنَّ الْقُرْآنَ حَقٌ And you have believed that the Qur'an is true. وَمَا جَاءَ بِهِ مُحَمِّدٍ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ حَقٌ And what the Prophet صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ He came with, it is the truth. لماذا? لِأَنَّ النَّبِي صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ لَا يَنْطِقُ عَنِ الْهَوَى Because the Prophet صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ He does not speak on his own authority. He does not speak on his own authority. He does not speak from desires. So that which you have knowledge of, that which you understand and comprehend, فَالْحَمْدُلِلَّهِ Then all praise and thanks belong to Allah Ta'ala. وَمَا لَمْ تَعْرِفْهُ And with that which you don't know, فَكِلْهُ إِلَىٰ عَالِمِهِ وَقَدْ كَفَاكِ then you refer it back to the one who knows about it, and you are sufficed. Now, you refer it back to the one who knows about it, you are sufficed. Because at the end of the affair, Allahu A'lam, Allahu Ta'ala, He knows best. Allahu Ta'ala, He is all knowing. And if Allahu Ta'ala says that's the way it is, that's the way it is. If the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said this is how it is, that's how it is. Like Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said, if he said it, it's true. If he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said it, it's true. Khalas. Now, from these things that we have been informed of, that an individual may not understand completely, but as we said, does not negate its existence and its reality, مثل إيمان بالرؤية الله Like the belief that we will see Allah And we will see Allah Ta'ala Because unfortunately you have some of mankind Who they disbelieve in this And they try to put forth conjectures to this Although it is clear in the book and clear in the sunnah That we will see Allah Ta'ala In the next life That the believers will see Allah Ta'ala in the next life, and we ask that Allah Ta'ala makes us of those who see Him in the Jannah. Ameen. The Shaykh says, مثل أحديث الرؤية كلها Like the أحديث الرؤية, all of them. Naam. أي رؤية الله في الدار الآخرة That we will see Allah in the next life. فعلى العبد أن يؤمن بأن الله يرى في دار الآخرة so it's upon the slave to believe with a firm belief that what? That Allah will be seen in the next life. That Allah Ta'ala, He will be seen in the next life. Naam. And that the believers will see Him. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Shaykh, he says, وَأَنْكَرَ الْمُعْتَزِلَ رُؤْيَةِ اللَّهِ فِي الدَّارِ الْآخِرَةِ And the Mu'tazila is a group called the Mu'tazila. They are straight. From the, from the astray groups who are misguided, they disapprove of this. They disagree with this. Naam. They, dis, they, they dispute this reality. Although Allah Ta'ala has informed us of this in the Quran, although the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has informed us of this, they have the audacity to deny it. Wa'iyadha billah. Naam. The Shaykh he says, Bina'in ala shubhatin batila. And this is, they deny it based upon a erroneous doubt. Because of an erroneous doubt and misconception that they have, they disbelieve in it. وَرَدَّ عَلَيْهِمْ أَهْلِ sunnah, And the people of the sunnah have refuted them. Have refuted them. بِحُجِجْ وَالْبَرَاهِينَ with proofs, overwhelming proofs and evidences. من كتاب الله وسنة الرسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم from the book of Allah and from the sunnah of His Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم. ومن من 
رد عليهم and from those who have refuted them al imam ibn qayyim رحمه الله تعالى imam ibn qayyim رحمه الله تعالى he refuted them نعم وحسج ابن قيم and imam ibn qayyim he brought as proofs and evidences seven ayat seven ayat من القرآن نعم seven ayat from the Quran نعم ولكن these these ayat قد يستبعد على الإنسان الاستدلال بها but these ayat يعني because of the imams because of the, يعني Imam Ibn Qayyim's understanding and his fahm he brought verses that the average person may not see the proof therein right because Imam Ibn Qayyim was from the Imma. He was from those who are extremely intelligent. Naam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed him with insight. Naam. So he brought not those ayat that are well known and clear to everybody. Because this is a clear to, to, yani, to everyone. That yes, we will see Allah ta'ala. But he brought other ayat that you may not understand them upon first looking at them, the ignorant one, the common one. He may not understand upon first looking at them that yes, this is also a proof. But the imam shows us this, as he brings this out as well to show what? Irrefutably, that every way you look at it, from every standpoint, we will see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Naam. From them, he brings the ayat where he says, أَنَّكُمْ Mulaquh. He says, Verily, you will meet him. Verily, you will meet him. Now, as Allah Ta'ala, He says, Verily, you will meet him. Meaning, him, Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala, that we will have with Allah Ta'ala a or a liqa. That there will be a liqa. Bain al abd wa bain al rabbi. There will be a meeting between the slave and between his Lord. Now, now upon surface, the commoner, the one who doesn't know, he will say, well, I don't see the wajj al-istidlal min hadhi al-ayah. He will say, I don't see the point of re- 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 uh, yani, reference and evidence from this particular verse. I don't get it. How? Look at the intelligence of the imam, subhanAllah. He says what? He says, wal and this is also from his understanding, Imam Ibn Qayyim's understanding of the Arabic language. Right? He says, He says, when you have a meeting, right, you have to what? See the one that you're meeting. Right? Because if not, then it won't be called liqa fi al Arab. It won't, it won't, it won't fit the criterion of what's called a liqa, a meeting in the Arabic language, because a meeting in the Arabic language necessitates that, that, that what both parties will see each other. My phone, huh? So you understand from this that what if there's a liqa, Allah Taala says, "Annakum mulaqu," that verily you are going to have a meeting with him, meaning Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. هذا يدل على أن المؤمنون well, they're going to see their Lord. This, all of this points to the fact that the believers, they will see their Lord. Naam. They will see their Lord. The Shaykh, he says, And this is what the Arabic language requires from such a thing. And then he brings other ayat, other ayat uh, like this. Imam Al-Bani, rahimahullah ta'ala, for those who want a clear cut, yani, uh, what do you say, those who want a clear cut verse, right? Imam Al-Bani, he brings as it comes in Surah Al-Qiyamah. And it is verse number, verse number 22 and 23. Right? 20, 22 and 23 from Surah Al Qiyamah. Right? That's the 75th Surah. Right? Verse 22 and 23. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, وُجُوهٌ يَوْمَ إِذِنَّا ضِرَى That faces on that day will be bright, will be illuminated, shining and radiant. Right? That the faces on that day will be bright, illuminated, shining and radiant. But who's going to have those faces, Yom Al-Qiyamah? The faces that are bright, illuminated, shining and radiant? Who? The believers. The believers. You see? That's how we say the believers will see their Lord Yom al -Qiyam. The believers. Wait. What does the next ayah say? Looking at their Lord. Looking at their Lord. Wait. Now, does it get any clearer than that? Allah Ta'ala tells in the Quran that there will be that the faces that day that will be bright, shining, and radiant. Looking at their Lord. But Allah Ta'ala affirms that we will see Him in the next life. Now, that the believers will see Him in the next life. So can there be anyone now who come and disputes that? Huh? Yeah. And you see, this is because their dispute is because of a misconception that is erroneous. And the Shaykh is going to expose their misconception now. The Shaykh, he says... That these individuals, they bring up an ayah, right? But even in this ayah, Imam Ibn Qayyim, rahimahullah ta'ala, shows how it's not a proof for them, but actually against them. And that is the ayah. لا تدركه الأبصار Naam, that eyes can't encompass him. But he encompasses yani, the eyes. Naam, the eyes can encompass him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. But he encompasses the eyes. Naam. And he is the most yani, the most generous, yani, the most and the one who knows everything. Nafala Shaykh al Islam ibn Taymiyyah, because some people use it and say, see, this is how we know you're not going to see Allah all the time. Nah? But this is actually a proof against them, not a proof for them. Nafala Shaykh al Islam ibn Taymiyyah, and Allah la yatamaddahu bi mujarrad al nafi. That Allah Ta'ala in this ayah, He doesn't come with a, with a, with a uh, unrestricted Negation. Right? It's not an unrestricted negation. But rather it's a negation that contains an affirmation. It's a negation that contains an affirmation. Now, I need you to follow me now. Because this is the kalam of some heavyweights now. Now, I'm talking about Shaykh al-Islam to me. Rahimullah ta'ala. Shaykh al-Islam. Listen. He says this is a negation that contains an affirmation. Now, and again, this is from Surah An'am, and it's verse 103, this ayah. So again, that's An'am, verse 103, where it says, No vision can, can grasp him, but he grasps all visions. It's a better translation. Now, that no vision can grasp him, but he grasps all visions. Surah An'am, verse 103. So within this, within this negation, there is an affirmation. In this negation, there's an affirmation. Na'am. And he, he brought many examples to show this. Many examples to show this. Na'am. Wahuna. Qawluhu. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. And here is Allah Ta'ala's statement. La tudrikhul abusar. Vision can't grasp him. Naam. Vision can't grasp him. The Shaykh he says, Fihi ithbat ru'ya. In this, there is an affirmation that he will be seen. In this, there's an affirmation that he will be seen. Why? Because the visions can't grasp him. They can't yani, uh, encompass Allah Ta'ala. 
Let me say this again, because maybe it's not clear. In that, in saying that visions cannot encompass Allah Ta'ala is a proof that Allah Ta'ala will be seen. But the but the but the but the but the viewing of Allah Ta'ala won't be of that which will encompass Allah Ta'ala. Does that make sense? That visions won't grasp him, meaning that what? He will be seen but not grasped. In other words. He will be seen but not grasped. It it it, it bear with me, it gets clear. It gets clear. Now the Shaykh he says the because he did not negate that he will be seen in the manafiya al But he negated that he will be encompassed, that the visions will encompass all of him. A little more clear now, right? Like, he says, Wallahu la yahitu bihi shay'a. Because Allah Ta'ala, nothing can encompass and see all of Allah Ta'ala. It's not possible. The Shaykh he brings an example. He says, Enter Tara Shams. You see the sun, right? Well, Enter Tara Sama. You see the sky, right? What Tara Kathiran min al mawjudat. And you see a lot of things that are, that, that are present from the creation, correct? وَلَا تَسْتُطِيرَ الْإِحَاطَ بِهَا But you can't, but your vision doesn't encompass all of it. So when you look at the sky, you see the sky, right? But does your vision encompass and grasp all of the sky? No. Only a portion of it that you're looking at. When you see the sun, does your vision encompass all of the sun? No. Only the side of the sun that's facing you. Right? Likewise with the moon. When you look at the moon, do you see all of the moon? No. You see the side of the moon that's facing you. The dark side of the moon, the other side. Can you see it? No. Nah, you don't see it. But you still see the moon, right? You understand now? So Allah Ta'ala doesn't negate that he will be, that, 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 that him being seen, he negates that you will see all of him. Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. Because visions can't encompass Allah. Allahu Akbar. Visions can't encompass Allah Ta'ala, but Allah Ta'ala encompasses everything. Now, so even in that which they try to bring as a proof, it's not really a proof because the ayat is not saying that. The ayat is saying that what Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala can't be encompassed by vision, meaning that what? No one is going to see all of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Why? Allahu Akbar. Allah Ta'ala is greater than this. Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Now, that makes Right. So when the believers see Allah Ta'ala in the Akhirah, nah, we will see Allah, but not all of Allah. Because Allah Ta'ala is greater than that, that He will be encompassed by all of our, all of our sight. And the Imam, He brings up things that are in His creation, right? That Allah Ta'ala, He made these things and, and, and their physical creation is greater than our creation. And we can't encompass these things. So if we can't accomplish these created things, how are we going to accomplish the Creator? Subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's not possible. And it's because our vision is limited. This is why. The reason is because our vision is limited. So with our vision being limited, we will limitedly only see what we have the ability and capability of seeing. So our vision is limited. Now, not just limited in its scope, right? But as the Imam is going to, he's going to explain, from the other things people try to bring up. And this is like that which comes in Surah Al-A'raf. And it's verse 143. Right? In A'raf, verse 123. When Allah Ta'ala tells Musa, Lan tarani. You're not going to see me. Right? Allah Ta'ala tells Musa, You're not going to see me. Surah Al-A'raf, verse 143. Remember, this is when... Musa asked if he can see Allah Ta'ala. Right? So Allah Ta'ala, he responded to him by saying what? Oh, Allah Ta'ala responded to him by saying what? Lent You're not going to see me. Because our vision is not just limited in its scope. Right? But it's also limited in the wind. You understand? It's limited in the wind. Not just the scope of our vision will be limited. Right? But it's also limited in the wind. Again, this is going to make sense as, as, as we go on. Just bear with me a little bit, inshallah. The Shaykh, he says, Talaba Musa min Rabbihi 
and yara that Musa asks his Lord if he can see him. Naam. The Shaykh says, "Well, can I have an Amr, Muharraman, or Mustahilan? Masala Musa hada. Istemiyo. Musa alayhi salatu salam. He was from the Ulul Azm. He was from the best prophets and messengers. So when you're talking about the best in mankind, the best in mankind is who? The prophets and the messengers. Right? The best of the prophets and the messengers is the Ulul Azm, the Fah. Okay? They are the best of the best. The best of the best. And the best of them is the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Right? After the prophets and the messengers, the best human beings, the Sahaba, and so on and so forth. Right? Understand now, Musa alayhi salatu salam, the best of the best, one of the most knowledgeable of human beings about Allah Ta'ala. The Shaykh, he says, if it was an issue that was prohibited or was impossible, if it was impossible or prohibited for us to ever see Allah, Musa would not have asked. Why? Because he would have known better. You understand? And to believe that's impossible and that Musa asked is to have bad opinion of Musa. You see that? So because Musa asked shows us that what is possible Allah can be seen. But what was missing was what? The wind. The wind. So the Shaykh he says, So Allah Ta'ala responded to Musa by telling him, Lan tarani. That you're not going to see me. Shaykh Rabi'ah he says, Ya'ni al-an. You're not going to see me now. You're not going to see me now. Now, he said, and this is because he says, and uh, Musa لا يطيق هذه في الدنيا. Musa, عليه السلام, he doesn't, he didn't have the ability to see Allah in this world. Okay, just like the human being now, we don't have the ability. To see Allah Ta'ala. But yeah. And look, 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 look here what the ayah says. فَلَمَّا تَجَلَّ رَبُّهُ لِجَمَلْ جَعْلَهُ دَكَّا نعم. And when Allah, so when He, or so when His Lord appeared, when His Lord appeared to the mountain, what happened to the mountain? It crumbled to dust. Now in that is a great lesson. Now, this is what Allah Ta'ala told Musa, لَن تَرَانِي أَيْ لَن تَرَانِي الْآن You're not going to see me now. What's the proof you're not going to see me now? Allah Ta'ala showed himself to the mountain and the mountain crumbled to dust. Now, whose creation is stronger? Human beings or mountains? So if the mountain crumbled to dust, couldn't take it, then Musa couldn't see him. Then, then. So this is a, so this is a proof of what that we that that we as Bashar, as human beings, as the Shaykh he says, Tarkib al Bashar al An la yatiquna bihi ruqyat Allah tabarak wa taala. That the physical makeup and construction of the human beings, it is not strong enough to see Allah tabarak wa taala now. It's not strong enough. Physically, we haven't been built to see Allah in this world. You understand? But in the next life, what? When Allah Ta'ala resurrects us, right? We're not going to be the same creation. In the sense of what? We're going to be resurrected. Correct? Our bones will be put back together, refleshed, and so on and so forth. But we're not going to be exactly the same way we are right now. And what's the proof of that? Is that a person may live to be 90 some odd years old. But when he goes to Jannah, Allah Ta'ala says what? He brings him back to a ripe young age. So there will be no old people in Jannah. You see? Now, but yeah. So this is it shows you that what? That yes, the creation... When we get recreated, for those of us, inshallah ta'ala, may Allah ta'ala make us us of those who enter into the Jannah. I mean, we won't be 100% the same, we'll be altered. Likewise, when the people go to the hellfire, 
The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said that they, one of the size of one of their teeth will be the same size as a mound of Uhud. The Allah Taala he would recreate them and make them bigger, so it's more flesh to burn. So the so their punishment is increased. So yes, they recreated, but slightly different. Okay. So in the Akhirah, Allah Taala he will build us so that what? So that we can see him in the Jannah. Okay, so that we can see him in the Jannah. Another proof that Allah Taala will be seen in the Jannah is the ayah that comes in Surah Al Yunus, and it's verse twenty-six. Where Allah Taala He says, "Dilladina ahsanu al-husna wa ziyada." That for those who, yani, perform their deeds well and do well for those believers who do well and, and, and excel and so on and so forth then for them will be Al-Husna Naam Al-Husna and Al-Ziyadah Husna and, and uh, addition and some extra for lack of a better term Naam the Shaykh he says يعني فسرها أن الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he explained this ayah he says that the ziyada is the ru'ya. The ziyada is that we will see Allah Ta'ala. That addition is that we will see Allah Ta'ala. He says, كَمَا فِي حَدِيثُ الصُحِيب فِي الصُحِيب مُسْلِمْ As it comes in the hadith of Suhaib in Sahih Muslim. وَفَسَّرَهَا الْعَدَدْ مِنَ الصَّحَابَةِ بِالرُّؤْيَا And a number of the sahaba also explained it as being the ru'ya. That the ziyada means ru'ya. نعم. يعني الحسنى بالمعنى الجنة. That husna means al-jannah. Wa ziyada, it means that we will see Allah Ta'ala, the ru'ya. Wa hiya ru'ya tillah, tabarak wa ta'ala. That we will see Allah, tabarak wa ta'ala. Wa hiya abdal min jannah. And seeing Allah is better than jannah. Shaykh? Better than jannah. Now, wallah yaqul li'ibadihi. Allah will say to his servants, ba'da an... يَدْخُلُوا الْجَنَّةِ بَعْدَ After they will enter into Jannah. نعم. هَلْ تَلِيدُونَ شَيْئًا أَزِيدُكُمْ Allah Ta'ala will say, Do you need anything else? I can give you some more. Give you something else. You need something else I can give you? So the inhabitants of the Jannah, they will say, قَالُوا مَاذَا نُرِيدْ They will say, No, we don't, we don't need. What, what can we possibly need? نعم. بَيَوْتَ بَيَوْتَ وَجُوهَنَا You made our faces bright and radiant. وَأَدْخَلْتَنَا الْجَنَّةِ And you entered us into Jannah. وَأَعْطَيْتَنَا وَأَعْطَيْتَنَا And you've given us and you've given us. Right? So they, and they, they say, what? There's nothing else we can possibly even imagine that we can have. We have everything. نعم. فَيَتَجَلَّ لَهُمْ رَبُّهُمْ So their Lord will show them his self. Nah? At that point, the people of Jannah, they will see Allah Ta'ala. As we explained, they will see what? Part of Allah Ta'ala, not all of Allah Ta'ala, because what? Our, our sight is limited in its scope, right? That we can't encompass all of Allah Ta'ala, but we will see Allah Ta'ala, but not all of Allah Ta'ala. Nah? And it's limited in its what? In its wind. We are not built now to be able to see Allah Ta'ala. And the proof of that is what? The mountain crumbled to dust. So of course us, khalas, we will be... Forget about it. Okay? Vaporize. Allah Right? But yeah. And when they see Allah Ta'ala, they what? They would, for lack of a better term, forget about all the other blessings in the Jannah. All the other ni'mah in the Jannah. It will be nothing compared to looking at Allah Ta'ala. It will be nothing compared to looking at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah ta'ala make us of them. Ameen. And it comes another, it comes a, a uh, the shaykh, he says, hadith in this regard, you'll find that there are 30 some ahadith. 30 authentic ahadith, yani, uh, explaining and showing that we will see Allah ta'ala in the next life. From them is that hadith that comes in Sahih Bukhari. And it's from the hadith of 
Abi Huraira radiyallahu ta'ala anhu The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said Tarawna rabbakum Ayanan kama tarawna shams Laysa dunaha Sahabun Wa kama tarawna al-qamar Laylat al-badri Laysa dunaha Sahabun He says that you will see Allah ta'ala clearly Just like you see the sun On the day that there is no clouds and just like you see the moon on the full on on the on the night of a full moon in a cloudless sky, now that you will see Allah Taala just as clear. Tayyib. Wa hadithu kathira ruya minha al Bukhari jumlatan wa Muslim kadalika jumlatan and many a hadith Imam Bukhari has narrated a portion of them and also Imam Muslim has narrated uh, a portion of them and the like. When it comes the ahadith in the like of this regard, when we hear them, whether we fully understand and grasp them or not, it is upon us to believe because Allah Ta'ala speaks the truth. Because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he speaks the truth. So the Imam ends off this particular yani, thought by saying what? Innama alayhi al iman bihi. But rather it is upon him to have certain knowledge in it. It is upon him to, I'm sorry, it is upon him to have belief in it. It is upon him to believe in it. Naam. Wa anna la yarudda minha harfan wahida. And that he does not reject from it even a single letter. He does not reject a single letter, but is upon us to willingly accept and, put, and to believe in that which Allah Ta'ala informs us of, and that which the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam informed us of. This is what we had prepared for tonight. فَنَكْتَفِي بِهَذَا الْقَدَرِ وَصَلَى اللَّهِ وَسَلَّمَ عَلَى نَبِيْنَا مُحَمَّدْ وَعَلَى آلِهِ وَصَحْبِهِ أَجْمَعِينَ